Well, hello and God bless everyone that has joined us together to on It's Getting Better All the Time Mental Health Outreach with myself and Sister Arnetta Allegri. As again, we're grateful that you have uh, joined us this wonderful morning that God has given us. Um, if you need help, glory to God, you can go to igbatt.com um, and you will find wonderful information there. Praise God. This morning, I want to, before we go into Father, let me just have a quick word of prayer. Our Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for your loving kindness, your tender mercies, and how you're yet keeping us in the midst of all the things that's going on around us. Lord God, I ask you to have your way, Lord God, that someone will be encouraged and strengthened today as uh, we go forth on this uh podcast for you. Have your way for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I want to just talk a little about, bit about um, becoming a senior, mental health, and uh, how to just enjoy aging, you know. Um, and I don't mind saying God has blessed me to get to be 71. Yeah, there's been a lot of trials and tribulations going this way. But I can say to you that in my experiences in working with not just myself, but working with other seniors, that it is important if there's any on here that's younger than that than me, <laughs> for that matter, uh, I would encourage you to begin to evaluate uh, the things that you've gone through, check yourself, see if you anywhere in your life you need to be able to, you know, give forgiveness for anything that has happened to you, realizing that when you forgive, it's not for the other individual. It's more so that you can cleanse your heart. You know, we uh, the Bible talks, and I'm, I'm going to bring that in every now and then. Yes, the Bible tells us to not let the root of bitterness be in us. And in working with different people that I've seen that are have bitterness in them, it is amazing to me how, let's use, for example, a tree. And that tree, it, where it's planted, if you ever go out and you look, those roots go all over the place. They will distort the ground. If they're under cement, they'll cause the cement to begin to bulge. So I'm saying that to say with us as human beings, if we haven't gotten rid of that, then we can damage other people's lives as we grow and go this way. And, you know, we want to be able to teach others the importance of, of growing over gracefully. And so along with that, I would say to you today, yeah, there are going to be things that's going to come up. You find out that you don't move as fast as you used to. You don't remember and, and you're not as quick, you know, with your thoughts as, as you used to be. But you still can have peace in the midst of getting older, you know, keeping a spirit of thanksgiving, knowing that God is the one that have allowed you to even get to this particular age that you're at and you don't want to begin to be mean and bitter because you can't do the things that you used to do. There are so many things that we can do as as a, a seniors, you know, we reaching out. This, uh, you know, I'm just calling it like it is. Young people need our help today. And so many of them are not getting the guidance that they need. So we can step in and, and be an encouragement to someone else. As we grow older, some people we may have to deal with that are beginning to forget. I've seen where the patience has been a little shorter than it used to be. So, you know, as, as, as we grow old and you're dealing with people that, some, number one, may not move as fast as, as we used to, may not remember as quick as we used to, all these things. And alongside the fact that there may be other things that come up. And I, and I use as a testimony right here um, in March of uh, 2023, excuse me, I had... Um, cataract surgery. And I had heard everyone's talking about, oh, girl, there's nothing to it. You know, uh, I was out driving the next day. I was okay. That wasn't my testimony. <laughs> so I got a little discouraged in, in, along the way, um, got to the point where I could not um, drive myself um, at, at night. I could not drive when it was raining. And if the sun was extremely bright, 
I don't even care if I had sunglasses on. I could not see the, the dashboard on my car clear. So that can be kind of discouraging, but I'm thankful that God had blessed me to have a daughter that was willing to work with me. I was going back and forth to two different uh, um uh, eye doctors, one for the retina, one for, for the cataracts. And my eyes kept filling up with fluid, got to the point that I could not read as well as I used. And I love reading. Couldn't do it. And then I said, oh, well, you know, you can, you can get the recorders. You can let them. I didn't want that. I didn't want to have somebody else um, reading to me. I wanted to read myself. So, yeah, we can go through areas of discouragement when certain things come up. But at the same token, I had to go back and be thankful that I could yet still see it all and still be able to, and we can't let these things hinder us from being able to move forward. And, you know, in the process of even that, sometimes we have to go back and see, okay, God, what is your plan and purpose for my life since I've gotten to this point? And uh, I, I'm thankful that it doesn't mean that we have to be bitter. We can still be pleasant, still enjoy people, still um, enjoy those that God have in our lives, as well as, you know, find out what other things we can do to enhance our, our, our senior life as, as we're going there. Um, it's so funny because I would say to my daughter, oh, these seniors, and so she would say, well, what are you? I said, uh, I'm 71. She said, what is that? I said, 71. So the question was, would you want me to call you a senior or just call you an old person? So, you know, we kind of made a joke out of it. What I'm getting at, we don't have to be mean and nasty because we've gotten older. And that is going to take, you know, enriching our, our lives. That is going to, you know, it's, you know, find things that we can enjoy. Enjoy our grandchildren. You know, enjoy still doing things that's going to help you. And it doesn't mean that you have to stop. You may not do them as fast as you used to. And, and we can't have pride that would cause us not to want help from others. That's part of it also. We, we get so independent. We want to do it ourselves. We don't want nobody else there. You know, I've been doing this all my life. And it's going to take some changes. Life is changing. Our, our society is changing. You know, the things that we use are, are changing. You know, we, we look back and we remember when we had the, the landline phones and we went from the, the dial to the, to the, to the, uh, the touch tone. Now we carry our phones with us. So what I'm getting at is in all the changes that go on, we must make sure that we are lining up um, not to lose our integrity or anything like that or the morals that we have, but we want to be able to to change to the point that we're not so stuck in the past that we can enjoy what's in our present right now. God has a present for each and every one of us. And yes, each day can bring on something different. And it's preparation for this life that's changing, you know, we know, you know, God lets us know that it's nothing new under the sun. So these things, they amaze us. They new to us because we've never seen it before, you know, and, you know, I, when we talk to young people, it's important. I've learned not to forget that I was at their age at one point. And I made mistakes also, and I'm still making mistakes. So I can't beat them down because of what they're going. And all of this that I'm talking about still goes in the area of mental health. You know, I can be carrying guilt or sorrow because maybe I didn't get to do this and I wish I'd done this, that, and the other and everything. I can't erase my past. I can't change my past, but I can appreciate where I am right now. I don't even know what's going to happen on tomorrow, more or less tomorrow than in the next few hours, but I can enjoy where I am right now. I'm learning the importance of being content at the place that I am in my life. I'm learning to appreciate those that God has in my life right now. You know, so, you know, when we when we can learn those things, it makes life more peaceful. 
It makes life more enjoyable. It makes life to me has been adventurous, you know. And yes, you know, we, we spend so much time working and trying to, to uh, survive and press forward when we're younger. And then when we get older, we sit in there and we wonder what was it all for? So what I'm getting at is let's enjoy life as much as we can while we still can. You know, I'm, I'm even thankful that my dad lived to be 91 years of age, but I watched him be old gracefully. At that age, he was, yes, he had gotten sick, couldn't do for himself anymore, but he was still a very kind man, very pleasant person. And it made it easier for me to be his caregiver because of his pleasantness. But I've also seen the other side where someone gets older and they're so full of bitterness over things that have happened in their life that they make it hard and then you know, not satisfied with the ones that are there to help them um, through whatever it is that they're going through with. And, and it's, it became uncomfortable. It doesn't have to be. I can't say that enough. It does not have to be. So the whole thing, important thing of all is enjoy who you are. If there's anything that in your life that you realize, look, I need to work on, I need to get a little better with this, it's still time to do it. As long as there's breath in your body, you have an opportunity to make some changes, um, to um, evaluate how important is this day. And is it worth me being grumpy and mean? Uh, um, you know, I've, I've heard uh, older people say to me, don't get old. I say, you're telling me to die young. I'll tell anybody, if God has allowed you to get to this age, Let's get there peacefully. Let's get there joyfully. Let's leave a legacy of love for others around us and not, oh, I'm so glad she's gone. She made life so hard for me. No. And, and yeah, there will be times that um, certain ones don't want to be bothered with you, but then appreciate those that do. I've learned to appreciate my family more, my friends, and the things that, that God have allowed me to do that it causes me not to be lonely. It's okay. Some of us do get lonely. Some of us seniors are living by yourself. But what can you do? You know, a lot of times we're waiting for others to do for us and then still have an attitude because we need them, but we don't want them at the same time. So what I'm getting at is, you know, whoever God puts in your life to be an encouragement, to be a strength, to be a light, to walk this walk with you, appreciate them to the fullest. Because it's it's uh, something when, you know, someone is gone and you, you're sitting there, you wish, I wish I did a little different. Maybe I could have treated them a little better. You have that time now. That choice is yours. That choice is mine. So I want to say to you, and all of that, all of it, believe it or not, plays a great part on my mental health. And we say all the time, thoughts, feelings, and actions go together. Um, and, I, and I've learned with that, that having the right thoughts, you know, not always um, suspicious of everyone. No one comes along in your life that God has not allowed to be there. So let's make the best of the time that we have with them. And, you know, we, we, we sleep better. <laughs> yes, as we get older, you know, we, we don't, may not sleep like we used to sleep. Like I said, you start having aches and pains that you <laughs> never imagined you would ever have. But still, there's no reason to be mean about it because that person did not do it to you. You know, it's just a part of getting older. It's, it's, it's a part of growing in this life, you know. So my encouragement is you to today, make the best of whatever time that you do have. Appreciate whatever age God has allowed you to be here. And as for me, I am not telling anybody that I'm here on borrowed time. I'm here on the time that God is allowing me to still be here. So since he's allowed me to still be here, I'm going to enjoy this to the fullest that he's allowed me to. And that in itself helps me to stay peaceful. 
helps me to stay calm. Help me not to be frustrated with all the things that's going on around with me. So, but I do encourage you all as, as you're growing, um, um, maybe my age may even be a little older, but one thing that has helped me through it all is having a prayer life. You know, having that personal relationship, and yes, I, I'm going to say it, having my personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ has given me peace that surmounts anything that I can ever go through in this life. And, you know, as I said, to have worked with my dad, that was the age he was, and here he is, he's going through with cancer and uh, Parkinson's, all this at the same time. But he was still a very peaceful, thankful man. And so he left that legacy with me. I want to be able to pass that type of legacy on to my children, to my grandchildren, to, to anybody else that I may come in contact with, that you still can have a peaceful life. And peace is freedom from agitation or disturbance where in the mind. So what are you training yourself for? How are you using your mind? You know, um, we, as I said before, we can't erase the things that have happened in our lives. Some things have happened that have been very hurtful and very devastating. But if you can come to that place and resolve with yourself that you can't change these things, but you can move forward, that you can learn from them, that you can help somebody else, then you'll be able to enjoy life as God intended for us to be. Um, and I'm not talking about uh, just being happy because things are going good right now. I'm talking about having the joy of God to be able to go through the things that we have to go through in this life. Because we know we don't have but so much time here. Some live to be 7, 80, some even, even up to 100 years old. But it's every day brings something different. We're full of trouble. But we can make it through this. But it all depends on my mindset. If I feel like I'm hopeless, if I feel like I can't do any better, if I feel like this is all life gave me, how dare God do this to me, then I'm going to be miserable. So I have to take the time out to nourish my mind in how I think. You know, what thoughts, I mean, what am I doing? What am I looking at? What am I allowing to become a part of me to, to be able to um, walk each day in the peace of God? So I just want to encourage you today that whatever you do, make it an effort, a, a purpose effort to live peacefully, first with yourself and then with all of those around you that God have put in your life. I'm not saying that you're not going to run into stuff. I'm not saying that you won't in, encounter with grumpy people. But we want to come to the place that we don't allow their actions to control us. So we got to learn how to respond and not react, not be on the defense, not always expecting things to go, go uh, awry in our life. We can live peacefully as an older person. And those are the things that I just wanted to encourage you with and say to you today, whatever you do, and I'm gonna keep saying it over and over again, learn to live peacefully, first with yourself, then with those that God allowed to come in your life and your family members. True, there may be some that um, you never have a good relationship with. You can't change that because you can't change anyone. But what you can do is 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 uh, allow God to show you how to to leave a um, a space of peace that when they and and even in telling people the truth we can do it without having an attitude and I've learned that people will they may not like me but they will respect me for speaking the truth how in love. So with all of that, all I'm saying is, I'll say it again, enjoy whatever life God has given you, whatever age he's allowed you to get to. Let's get there peacefully. Talk a little bit joyfully. About and um, I believe that's something that all of us have in our lives, some things that we regret, things that we wish we had done a little differently. Um, and I want to say to you today, whatever you do, as you cannot change what has happened 
yesterday, even hours ago. We can't change those things. We don't, though, want to live in a, 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 a spirit of regret, constantly rehashing and wishing I had did this and that and the other, because then it's going to make you miserable. It's going to keep you agitated. It's going to, it, these things will eventually begin to wear on your, on your well-being. You know, we can, we can hang on to our regrets so much that it brings sickness in our body. You know, this, this brain of ours sends signals to the body and we can um, keep these toxic thoughts about the regrets and the things that we wish we had done differently in our lives so much so that um, we put our own selves in a vice. We find ourselves in a bondage that we don't want to be in. You know, I, I know what it is to have, uh, you know, live with some regret of some things and to the point that, that it almost stagnated me, okay? Um, but when I began to realize I, I couldn't change those things. They did happen. The importance is that I learn from them and, and uh, uh, not allow myself to be in, in those type of positions again, you know. Um, so I want to encourage you today that whatever it is you may be going through with, that you need to let go of the regret. You may have to even get some counsel, you may have to sit down and talk to someone about the things that you're, you're dealing with, um, with yourself so that you can come to that place of living peacefully, because otherwise you, as I said, you're going to cause your own self, not just to be uh, mentally miserable. You can bring on uh, strokes and heart attacks and, and all these things in your own body. You're damaging yourself uh, because of holding on to regrets. And I have learned in the process that I've, I've gone and I've asked God to, some things to, you know, ask him to forgive me for it. I'm not saying asking God for forgiveness is going to take away the consequences of whatever those things are. But one thing for sure, God can give you grace to go through whatever it is uh, that you, consequences of whatever that has happened. Some of the, my regrets, <laughs> uh, having someone older tell me something and me at the time thinking, they oh, they don't know what they're talking about. But I've learned now they had walked this way before me. And so I would say to you today, if you, you know, for those that are younger, you know, you have older people that are speaking into your life, words of life to help you, to encourage you, take them at face value of what they're saying to you to help you to not have some regrets. You know, um, going this way, we are going to make mistakes. I made mistakes. And I had to come to a place of, of reconciliation with myself over the things that, that I had gone through with. Um, you know, we sit there and I wish I had, I wish, I, oh, maybe if I had, I can't change those things. You can't change them, but I can learn from them to be able to move forward. Because otherwise, as I said before, you're bringing a lot of sickness on yourself. And you'll get to the point that you're, you're walking in defense and always expecting something bad to happen because you have not been able to forgive yourself for mistakes that you have made. Um, yes, regret, it, it's a human thing. We do regret them, but it doesn't mean I have to stay there. I have to learn how to overcome it. And you say, you keep saying overcome them, resolve the fact that yes, they did happen. Yes, I did make this mistake, but I, it's, I've learned from it. I will not do this again by the grace of God so that I'll be able to move forward. So I pray that, you know, that it, whatever it is that you, you're dealing with, you know, we, and even some of us, you know, we feel bad and say, oh, uh, we, we not carry our own regrets. We may re regret what family members have done to us or friends even. I say again, you can't change them, but we can overcome them of whatever things that have happened. So in all of it that, that I'm saying to you is it's a mindset. It's a mindset. 
and I can sit here and go over and over and over and over again, rehashing the situation that, that have happened, it's not going to change it. So why can't I overcome it? So in, in the process, let's not beat ourselves up, okay? We have a God that is gracious, that is loving, that is merciful. He will chastise us because he loves us, but he won't turn. We, you know, in the midst of, of, uh, of going through regrets, we might even stay away from people, which brings in isolation. And then when I isolate myself, been there, done that. When I isolate myself, I open the door for the devil to start beating me up in my mind with all these horrible thoughts. So I had to get to the place where I look, you know, and I'm not saying talking to everybody. Please understand that. Um, you, you may have a good someone that God has given you as a good friend that you all can talk about some of these things together. Someone that's going to be honest, someone I'm talking about a real friend, you know, that help you walk through them. Um, if you don't have a friend, you may have to reach out to someone for counseling so that you can just release yourself so that you can free your own self up so that you can live peacefully and free from the regrets of the things of life. As I said before, the important thing is, yes, we do have these regrets, but learn from them, grow from them so that you can be a help and an encouragement to somebody else that they won't go through some of the same things. So with all of that, I thank God for you. God bless you. And I'll say this to you, that one of the main foundational things that have helped me through all of this and learning this is seeking the wisdom of God and the direction of God. Um, and might be someone that we're talking to today that you've not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. He is there for you. He is a friend that will stick closer than a brother. His love for you will never change. People may know your past and they don't want anything to do with you, but we can never ever stick too low for the Lord Jesus Christ. He went to the cross. He shed his blood for you, for me, you know, and um, he's an everlasting loving God and he can walk you through, help you through, endure. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. So whatever it is that you're dealing with, know that you have a God that you can go to, that he can help you in the midst of whatever it is you may be going through in your life. I'm not saying you won't ever have any more regrets and problems, but you, you will better know how to deal with whatever your regrets are, your mistakes that you've made because of the grace of God. So with all of that, I thank God for you. Please be encouraged. Please grow. Please gain wisdom and knowledge of, of that you don't allow your, your life to seem hopeless and worthless because you can't let go. You can do it. You can, by the grace of God, you can do it. And you can move forward to a better life in whatever your situation may be. God bless you all. We love you in Jesus' name. So I think before I go, I will end it this way. And that is to just to have prayer for someone that might be going through at this particular time. So Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I come at this time. I thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace, for your peace. I thank you, Lord God, that whatever it is, that you are a refuge and our strength and a very present help in trouble. Lord God, it might be someone that's, that needs your comfort today. You said you would not leave them comfortless, Father. We thank you for that. I ask you to strengthen them, fortify them, creating them a clean heart and renew the the right spirit in them. Help them to let go of all the regrets, Lord God, and that they would gain wisdom and knowledge and understanding of you in the midst of whatever the things are that they're dealing with. For your glory, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. We appreciate you. Can't say it enough. This has been, it's getting better all the time. Mental health outreach. Um, you know, let, let God be God in your life on today so that you can know what it is to have his peace, which passes all understanding. You know, be sweet as you go through the day. 
Yes, you may encounter those that are not so nice, but one thing for sure, get to that place that you don't allow them to dictate your actions, to give you something else to regret. God bless you all. Appreciate you.